Well, hello, class, and welcome to Unit 4. Believe it or not, we are, um, I guess we're close to halfway through this term, which is crazy to think about. Uh, we've done, uh, you know, quite a bit. So, and, and when I say we, really what I mean is you. So, um, <laughs> uh, you are, um, you're in this interesting place. So, uh, so I remember when I was first asked to work with y'all on this course, um, there were some emails that had gone back and forth between um, Dr. Barron and some of our students, and there was, uh, from a semantics issue, there was uh, some uh, uh, just slight confusion. And there was this question that said, uh, wait a second, I thought, uh, I thought, you know, looking up independent study, this isn't an independent study, uh, what, do you, what do you mean? I thought it was a course tutorial. Yes, it is a course tutorial. But the, the uh, let me, how do I say this? Uh, this is not an online class quite yet. Okay, we don't have a uh, quorum. We don't have enough students to make it that it's not fully developed as an online class. So really, you are in many respects operating on an independent basis uh, by way of a course tutorial. And the the difference there uh, is that um, the the difference between course tutorial and independent study, of course, is that a, a course tutorial is a class that exists. Okay, so uh, this is a semantics issue, but it's important that you that you see this. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, the course tutorial is an existing class that you are working with with under the supervision of an individual, like one or two. In this case, we just happen to have five students that are all distance-based and are online arm, and so we don't have the class fully developed um, just because it wasn't on schedule to do that. So you are working on your own. And so a lot of this, this, this class actually looks uh, somewhat different, not, not much, but somewhat different than the actual face-to-face -face class. So you have an additional book that you're reading because you don't have as much face-to-face -face interaction and classroom discussion, right? There's not as much engagement because you're working on this class by yourself. There's an additional article because I want us to think about these kind of counterintuitive gestures that I really believe is what we as leaders should be doing. And when you get into the, the, the Jean Leonard Blumen book and we're talking about connected leadership, one of the things that she talks about quite a bit when it comes to connected leadership and the achievement style is this idea of doing what I just said, counterintuitive gestures. So doing these things that kind of stand out, that are unique, that set you apart, that are somewhat um, <clears throat> kind of catch people off guard and, and, and make you think... Um, I expected somebody to do this, and yet here you are doing it that way. And so the reason that we use this article on leadership and the Sermon on the Mount is because when I think of Scripture, okay, when I think of the life of the Christian, when I think of the Christian mind, the Christian lifestyle, all these different things, I think of it really as, as counterintuitive, as counter, you know, some, some would say countercultural, but really it's counterintuitive. And I think the best example of that is what we see in the Sermon on the Mount. Okay, the Sermon on the Mount has to, you know, it's it's a brilliant passage of Scripture as Jesus is basically saying, um, <clears throat> this is how a Christian is to live. And you say, well, that's impossible. And yes, it is, because we are, we are not to do this on our own. We are to do this under the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, to, to be empowered to live as Christ has called for us to live. But what I love in that passage of Scripture is the reality that we see when it says, you have heard it said, right? And yet I tell you, over and over again, we see something similar to that. You have heard it said that you are to love those who love you and hate your enemies. Well, loving those who love you, that's that's easy. I can do that. I can love people that love me. I, people that are lovable, I can love. People that are nice to me, easy to love. People that treat me well, that say nice things, easy to love. But people that hate me, that's not... No, I'm not going to love them, right? This is this is my my humanity, my humanness saying this. So, yeah, I'm going to hate those who hate me. But I tell you, you are to love those who hate you and pray for those who persecute you. Wait a second, hold on. It's counterintuitive. It doesn't seem to make sense because usually it's well, do unto others as they do unto you. But what we really see is do unto others as you would have them do unto you counterintuitive. I think the best forms of leadership is counterintuitive. So that's the connection I want us to make between between this, this Sermon on the Mount article from Winston and Tucker that hopefully y'all have looked at um, and what we're looking at in this class. So there's a bit of a difference and yet at the same time it's very similar. So here we are and you've just completed uh, as of week two 
your uh, online portfolio, kind of you designed the, the way you want your, your, your portfolio website to look. So I gave you just some brief feedback. Hopefully you've made those adjustments. Um, if you haven't, please do that right away. Last week, we spent some time, you spent some time, hopefully, really thinking deeply uh, about um, what what is it that you're going to bring to the table. I was talking with a student in the face-to-face on-ground program just yesterday, and they're in Capstone. I said, say, how, how's the Capstone course going? And they said, you know what, It's it's been awesome, because it's forced me to really think deeply about what it is that I've accomplished so far. What have I learned? What have I taken away from this program. Now, I think one of the things that happens, especially for those who go through rather quickly, um, and really, you know, if you think about it, everybody's going through quickly because you have the opportunity to take a couple classes per term and you're kind of just like powering through. So even two and a half years on the grand scheme of things is still pretty quick. But when you really stop to think about what is it that I've learned, there's so much. And so this student was telling me, you know, it's great because I was trying to articulate something, you know, and they're in the same section where they're looking at these articulation of competencies. And, and, and they were saying, and so as I started to kind of write, I remembered that I had read, you know, this book, and I read that book, and I did this assignment, I gave this presentation. All of a sudden, now I was having to choose between, do I want to actually talk about it from this angle, from this class perspective, or do I want to talk about it from, from, from this angle and this class perspective? So they're going through and they're brainstorming all these artifacts that are then giving proof to what they're saying they've learned and the journey that they've been on, the experience they've had so far in the program. So I hope that you have given some great thought to that. If you haven't, um, I want to strongly encourage you to really get on the horse and start doing that because it's going to, um, these next four and a half weeks will fly by and we have to have everything done uh, by uh, end of this time together. All right, so there's that. Uh, this week, you uh, should be in uh, Littman Blumen chapters four and five. So you're going to be in chapters four and five in Connected Leadership, and then in chapter four from Cameron, so for chapter four in uh, Positive Leadership. Uh, the topic this week is we'll be kind of looking at the literature, so kind of building off of uh, your artifact uh, brainstorming. Now you're really starting to think about the literature, the content, things that you've looked at. So. I'll, uh, I'll share with you an article on writing the literature review, which I know that you're familiar with from your research classes, but just as a reminder, we'll do that. And then um, uh, by February 4th, you have the articulation of competencies, the two competencies that are due this week, the draft. Okay? I want to make mention of this because I've worked with students beforehand, and they've been confused. Although, if you, if you look in the syllabus and the assignments, you'll see that this is very clearly articulated. Although it's there, students still miss it. So this week, you're writing an articulation of competency for two of the five core competencies. You are still required by the end of our term, when it comes down to you being done with the semester, you still have to write an articulation of competency for all five, okay? That's really important that you keep that in mind. Right now, all I'm asking for you to do is to do the two of them, okay? So I want you to start thinking, how am I going to communicate and articulate where I stand in these competencies, okay? You'll eventually do all five, but right now you're doing uh, just two of them, okay? Um, it's due February 4th, so uh, we still got, you know, some time. Uh, obviously, tomorrow's the first, and then, uh, what is that? So Wednesday, the second, and third, and then fourth is, uh, is that Saturday. So the fourth of February is Saturday. Um, and here's the deal. So because of the self-paced mode of this class um, and uh, the fact that it's, eight weeks it's short they have to be in by February 4th they really do because and here let me say let me tell you why okay um, the reason that I'm gonna be kind of a stickler on due dates is because if we allow extra time that cuts into uh, the extra time or the extra assignments you have and I don't want you to get behind because if you get behind man I tell you what um, it's not gonna go well for your overall uh, course completion okay so so I'm just I'm saying right now February 4th is when they are due they have to these two articulation of competency have to be submitted by February 4th okay um, I'm, I'm sorry but I can't give any uh, wiggle room on that so that you stay on schedule and don't get behind um, and uh, kind of get off the, the path of completing things in a timely fashion so that everything is done by the end of week eight okay so, uh, so February 4th, two of five, but eventually when the class is all said and done, I want you to be thinking I have to write one for all five. Right now it's just those two, okay? 
So there's that. Um, in addition to all of that, you still um, have, uh, some of you anyway, I should say, still have people that are outstanding in the completion of their 360 assessments, okay? Um, so I heard from uh, one student today, and they had one person still outstanding. Um, I've already told one student that they have all five in, another student they just had their fifth complete, which I'll, I'll contact you. And then I have two other students that um, one only has one, and one only has two, okay? So we're way beyond uh, the time frame where these 360s need to be completed. So um, if you are hearing from me or have heard from me, please contact all of your people, because I can't tell you who it was that hasn't completed it yet. You need to contact all of your people and remind them about just how important it is for them to do this for you. And remember, um, I can't release the results until all five have completed it, okay? Uh, so that's really, really, really important, all right? So if you have any questions on that, please call or email me. Um, love to talk to you about that, but we really need them to complete. So to recap, February 4th, is when your two articulation of competencies for two of the five is due. But remember, you'll eventually write one for all five. That's due at the end of the term. Right now, two of five, you'll submit that. Just email it to me. Okay, that's the easiest way. We're not going to use Sakai for those purposes. Email me that document, and I'll uh, give you feedback as quickly as I can on those. Um, and then uh, if you still have outstanding respondents for your 360, please contact everybody and remind them about how important it is they complete this on your behalf to help in your degree completion because we really can't move forward um, on everything until those um, assignments have been completed, okay? And then um, if you need the articles, if for some reason you don't have uh, the, the Winston um, and Tucker article uh, or um, the, let's see, the Hollenbeck, McCall, and Silzer article on competencies, let me know. Um, you should be able to go into the AP libraries and find them and access them through the, the databases. Um, but if for some reason you can't find them, let me know and I can do what I can to help you with that. Uh, next week we'll look at, again, uh, connected leadership. We'll talk about the competency matrix and I'll kind of explain how we came to a place of using both connected leadership and competencies and where they in intersect. And I'll have you do some work on that that you may end up wanting to use um, in your final capstone presentation and your portfolio. All right, so continue to read, continue to work away, uh, be thinking about the literature review, which is due on the 18th of February. Um, be thinking about how that works within the context of your competency, of um, your articulation of competency. Uh, how do competency-based education fit with this? How does uh, the, the Sermon on the Mount connect? All those different things. How does positive leadership? I want to see all of these things, kind of these, 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 some would say kind of more philosophical or ethereal ideas. How do they come together? How do we circularly bring them together to make sense within the greater context of leadership as you're uh, working on that currently, all right? So I hope the week is going well. If I can help in any way, please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, and I look forward to receiving your articulation of competencies here on the 4th of this month, or I guess of next month. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.